coming up on Marriage Today. Nakedness is, is a picture of saying, I've got nothing to hide from you. There's nothing up my sleeve. I'm not even wearing sleeves. There's nothing that I'm hiding from you. So many times when we're facing anxiety, we believe all these lies and we, and we live full of shame, but God wants us to surrender that to Him. He wants us to have freedom and He wants us to know and believe His truth. And so I just think that, that when we get real about it and we, we realize what we're facing together and we talk about it with each other, we can get through just about anything together. We are Dave and Ashley Willis with Marriage Today, and we are so excited to be sharing part of our EXO 2017 session. Yeah, and I'm so excited to be sharing this session because in it, we share a lot of our own story. I mean, it was a very personal journey of some of the struggles we faced in our marriage, things like anxiety, depression, financial pressure, even pornography, and how we leaned on each other during some of those difficult struggles. And the truth is, every single marriage is going to face difficulties. Every marriage is going to face struggles. And if you ever wish that you knew how to better support each other in those struggles, because the truth is, how you lean on each other in the difficult times will make a world world of difference for the health of your marriage in the long term. And Ashley, as you've so wisely said, a strong marriage rarely has two strong people at the same time. It's, it's usually a husband and wife taking turns being strong for each other in the moments when the other one feels weak. And you've done that for me so many times. And the way you share so courageously part of your story and your journey and our journey in this session that they're about to watch, every time I watch it, it just encourages me and inspires me. Well, thanks for saying that, sweetie. You know, it's our hope that it encourages you as well. That is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So watch this, and we'll be back with more. Always be honest with each other. Secrets and lies are the enemies of intimacy. And a verse that we have that, we, that goes directly with this is Genesis 2.25. It says, Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. And you know, when, when we read this verse, for those of you who heard naked and you're with us for the first time, welcome back. Yeah, you said naked, and half up, the guys right? like perked naked, up. They're what? like, what? Yeah. Where? You know? It, okay. It's, so it's we're a, glad you're here. It's a great Bible verse. It, <laughs> it is. You know, we love hearing the word naked. Being naked and being married is awesome, right? And of course, they're talking about the physical nakedness there. But we believe, you know, when, when, when God was talking about this, when he was designing marriage, and he said they were both naked and felt no shame, he's talking about them being naked on a spiritual level as well. Having what we like to refer to as a naked marriage, where there are no lies between them. There are no secrets. There's no hidden bank accounts. There's no secret cell phones. There's no friends on Facebook they don't want their spouse to know about. There's nothing that we hide from our spouse. Because when we do this, we don't have the kind of marriage that God wants us to have. Yeah, the, the, the level of your honesty is always going to determine the level of your intimacy in marriage. Mm -hmm. And the moment you find yourself keeping secrets from your spouse, then you're already outside the bounds of that covenant that God created. Your marriage is lo no longer naked. I think God intentionally painted the picture of that first marriage before there was sin, before there was anything mm -hmm. getting in the way. And he told us they were naked, not just to paint the picture of the importance of physical intimacy in marriage, but to paint the picture, as Ashley said, of being naked emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Right. Nakedness is, is a picture of saying, I've got nothing to hide from you. There's nothing up my sleeve. I'm not even wearing sleeves. There's nothing that I'm hiding That's from true. you. And so if you want your marriage to go to that next level, then take what we call the secret-free guarantee. It's saying, I'm not going to keep anything from you, and there's no question that's off limits. You can ask me anything, mm -hmm. and I want to do my best to give you an honest response. You can ask me anything. And, and the first time that I start stepping out of bounds and making a purchase that I don't want you to find out about or having a conversation that I hope you don't find out about, then I'm gonna recognize I'm out of bounds and I'm gonna confess that and I'm gonna fight for trust in our marriage. Because there's gonna come times in your marriage when you are struggling. And, 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 and many of us in this room are struggling right now. Maybe you're not necessarily struggling in your relationship with each other, but you're struggling in some part of your life. I mean, we live in a, in a broken world that has a lot of struggles. 
mean, right. Jesus never promised us a life without struggles. He just promised that we would never face them alone. Mm -hmm. He said, never will I leave you or forsake you. But he also said in this life, you, you will have troubles. He wanted us to be ready. And in marriage, we have the opportunity to face those troubles and those struggles together in partnership. And we, sadly, we see so many couples who kind of look at their issues as those are my problems, those are her problems, and we face them individually. Mm -hmm. And that's not what marriage is. It has to be unified that we're going to face this together. And it leads to this final principle. That's right. Number three says, never let your spouse face a struggle without your full partnership, encouragement, and support. And a verse that goes along with this is Galatians 6, 2. It says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And, and Dave and I are no stranger to struggles. And uh, we like to really talk about this when we go to conferences because we want you all to know that you're not looking at a couple up here that's never had a reason to divorce or a reason to, to have you know, a, a communication breakdown. We've had some struggles of our own. And one in particular that I wanna share with you is when I went through a four-year battle with anxiety and depression. And it started a little bit after we got married and uh, we were having a lot of trouble with some family members um, kind of infringing on our marriage, which is a whole other um, issue that could have a whole other talk. But it ended up uh, lingering with me and I was just dealing with anxiety and depression. And, and it, it, was, it was like those commercials you see for medication for these things where it has like a little person with a cloud over their head and it's raining and it's like this dark cloud and they, it's following them around wherever they go. And that's exactly what it feels like. It was like this heaviness over me that I couldn't shake off. And there were days where I had trouble breathing. It felt like something was sitting on my chest and, and I just, I couldn't even figure out exactly what it was that was causing me to be so sad or so anxious, but it, it just got, it got bigger and bigger. And I would pray about it and, and I wouldn't feel the release necessarily. I mean, God would get me through the day as he always does as our sustainer, but I just, I just could not shake it off. And I, I finally was very real with Dave about it. I mean, I'm sure he could sense that something was wrong with me. And, and you know, there would be nights where I couldn't sleep, where I would wake up and feel physically ill and I'd run to the bathroom and, and my mind would just be spinning with lies because that's what Satan does when he's trying to mess with us. And he, he sure did a number on me. He would tell me things like, Dave's gonna leave you because you probably did something wrong to, to feel this way anyway. And you're damaged goods now. I mean, you're not even the woman you used to be. You know, you're not fun anymore. It's, he doesn't feel like he married the same, you know, that his wife is there anymore. So he's probably gonna leave you. And you know, you're a terrible mother. You're a terrible mother to feel this way. How dare you even let this depression and anxiety get into your life? Oh, and you know what? You must not be a really a strong Christian because no strong Christian would have anxiety or depression if they really believed. I had all these thoughts weighing on me day in, day out. And there would be nights where I would wake up and I just knew that I needed prayer. And I would wake Dave up sometimes like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And every time you all, every time I woke him up, when I know he was exhausted, I know he had to go to work really early in the morning, he never once said, you know what, Ashley, this has been going on long enough. You need to just put on your big girl pants and you need to handle this yourself. Or he never once said, you know, I'm just really tired of this. I'm exhausted. Can you just call somebody? Call somebody else, call your mom. Maybe she can pray with you. He never once said, you know, I, this is really your problem. It's not really mine. You know, I just, I've told you everything I can tell you. So you just need to handle this on your own. Never once, never once, not one time. And I woke him up a lot, believe me. I woke him up a whole lot. Every time I woke him up and I asked him for prayer, he would grab my hand, he would pray with me as long as it took. And these were sometimes some long prayers and, and prayers full of tears for me and a, and a heart racing just because I could not get relief. And Dave would pray with me and I would feel the relief come over me. And then I would sometimes say, you know, sweetie, I just so appreciate your prayers and I understand if, if you wanna leave me because I would have those lies. I would have those lies in my mind. And every time he would look me straight in the face and he would say, I love you more today than I have ever loved you, even on the day that I married you, and I am staying with you. I am never leaving your side. And he would say that to me every time, every time. And you all, if it wasn't for God sustaining me through that time, and for a husband who prayed with me time and time again and was with me in my corner, and then eventually he helped me take the steps necessary to get some really good Christian counseling. If it wasn't for all of that, I would not be standing here today. It looked very bleak for me. I felt very alone before I shared it with my husband and, and let him come into this dark place with me and be my partner. But when I did that, 
everything started to change. And I'm just so thankful. I share this story because I'm so thankful that Dave was there for me because I do see so many couples who are struggling where maybe one couple is dealing with depression or cancer or a really bad work situation. And I see them struggling alone and I see their partner feeling like they can't do anything. But let me tell you this, you may not be a counselor. Maybe you don't know the answers, but the best thing you can do for them is get in their corner with them in that dark place and stay by their side till you're able to both walk into that light out of that dark corner. And you will be so glad that you did. And so just be there for each other. We have to be there for each other because we will face struggles, like Dave said. So we have to face them hand in hand. You have to face them hand in hand. And you can't always pick your struggles, but here's what you need to remember. Every struggle in your marriage, every struggle in your life is going to become a story someday. Mm-hmm. It's either going to be a story about how you got stronger, how you leaned on each other, how you grew in your faith, and how you came out stronger on the other side, or it's going to be a story about why you gave up. You don't get to pick your struggles most of the time, but you get to pick which story becomes true. That's true. And you need to lean on each other. You need to work together. You know, the picture, the, the, kind of the, the picture, the, the visual that helps us is, is to think about marriage as if it was a, a bird and a husband and wife are like two wings on that same bird, both, both submitting to, to Christ's headship. And of course, there, there are times where the, the husband is called to lead. That's a, a beautiful and a completely separate talk. But in this picture, talking about struggles, I want you to picture marriage. Christ is the head. The husband and wife are each a wing on this bird. Have you ever tried to see a bird fly using only one wing? When one of those wings is broken, it, it's, it's sad to watch because nothing happens. It doesn't get off the ground. It just spins in circles. And a lot of marriages look that way. Mm-hmm. because it's one spouse trying to get things moving and the other one refusing to participate for whatever reason. You've got to be strong for each other. And Ashley has so wisely said that a strong marriage rarely has two strong people at the same time. It's usually one spouse being strong for the other in the moments when that other spouse needs it most. She's been strong for me so many times. That was one example that I was strong for her and she was dealing with something that she didn't cause. She's been strong for me and helped me in things that are the result of my own bad choices. And just for a very few minutes, I want to talk to you about a subject that that might be awkward as we kind of prepared it to end, because this subject, as we work with married couples, we've seen that it is just so rampant, and yet it's not talked about nearly enough considering how widespread the problem is. I'm talking about pornography. You know, I was one of the 95% of United States children that were exposed to pornography before my 18th birthday. 95%, that's 19 out of 20 of your kids and our kids before they turn 18 will see hardcore pornography, whether they were looking for it or not. It's just, it's everywhere. It, it was implanted in my mind at a young age, even though I was a, a Christian young guy, I knew what Jesus taught about lust. I knew that he said to look at a woman lustfully is to commit adultery in your heart. I, I knew that, that Ephesians said there shouldn't be a hint of sexual immorality among you. And so by my willpower alone, I tried to stay away. I didn't do what the Bible says to do when you're caught up in a sin. I didn't confess it. I didn't seek accountability or help. I just thought I'm gonna deal with this on my own. But the Bible never calls us to deal with our sin on our own. And that's where Satan really gets us when we isolate ourselves, because then we start believing the lies. And I started believing some lies about porn as a young man. I I believed one lie that said it doesn't really matter. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's nobody's business. And then I believed a lie on the other extreme that said, this is unforgivable. If anyone ever found out about this, you'd be ruined. No one would ever respect you. No one would ever marry you. And then I believed a third lie. And maybe it was the most dangerous one of all because it helped me to justify the sin. It said, maybe this is a struggle right now, but it won't be forever because one day you'll be married and and you will never be tempted again. I will never feel lust again. A Victoria's Secret ad could come on and I would be disgusted. You know, I would just never feel any kind of lust and my eyes would never wander. And so I, when we got together, porn had not been an issue for a while. I thought it was just something from my past. And so I made the mistake of keeping it a secret. I never told her it had been a struggle. I never asked for her accountability in that. We got married, me still carrying that secret that this is something that I'd struggled with. And things were fine. But then about a year into our marriage, about 15 years ago, that temptation came back out of nowhere. And all those images, those terrible images that I had filed away in my mind started replaying. And that temptation came on so strong that I fell right back into that terrible pit of sin. And now, now I'm a married man committing what I know for what the Bible teaches is is an act of infidelity, no matter how I want to spin it. And I felt shame and I felt fear and I thought she can never find out, she can never know. And so I hid it from her. 
and I tried to stay away, but, but, but I, I would slip up and I would fall back into it. And, it was, and I wish I could tell you that I had the courage to just finally confess it, but I had to get caught. You know, she uh, ultimately found on the computer where, where I had been, and, and she was heartbroken, not only because of what I'd been looking at, but because of this, this secret, this dishonesty that was, that was in our marriage, that, that wounded the trust in our marriage. And, and to make a long story short, you know, she chose to respond with, with grace, still grace, but accountability, because forgiveness and trust are two different things. You can forgive someone instantly because forgiveness cannot be earned. God gives it freely and we must give it freely to others, but trust cannot be given. It can only be earned. You don't have to trust someone in order to forgive them, but you have to forgive in order to make trust possible again. And she right. chose to forgive and she chose to allow me the ability to start rebuilding that trust. She encouraged me along the way. She didn't hold this over my head. She didn't use it as ammunition and arguments later on, but she responded with such love and with such grace. And, and over, over time, you know, by putting you know, accountability in, in place and with her love and support and the way she responded, we worked through that came out stronger on the other side. I'm thankful to say that it's, it's been years since that's been an issue. But now as we work with couples, we work with ministries like triplexchurch.com, we see that this problem is even more rampant and it's getting our kids younger and younger and younger. And I say all this to say, don't let this be a secret in your home. You, you need to be active, actively talking about it, actively protecting your kids from it and actively, if this is a struggle for you as it is for many in this room and many who are watching right now, to be honest about it, to admit that it's a sin, and to seek the forgiveness that Christ brings, to seek the forgiveness of your spouse, and then to move forward with total transparency as you should have in all different places of your marriage. And, and that transparency, man, it helps. Now we have, you know, we have a marriage of total transparency and it's so much better than trying to keep secrets because secrets are exhausting, aren't they? They are, and I think we tell ourselves, oh, this is gonna hurt her so much, or this is gonna hurt him so much. But the bottom line is that is a lie from Satan because he's wanting to keep you all disconnected and, and from having the marriage that God wants you to have. Because when we bring that truth to light, that's where God does all of his healing, right? Because we've got to admit it, then we have to repent, and then we have to do what it takes, like Dave said, to rebuild that trust. Dave always says, you know, a hard truth is so much better than a hidden lie. And so if you're hearing some of these things today, and maybe it's not pornography, but anything that you're going through, anything, maybe you're experiencing anxiety and depression and you've never really talked about it with your spouse, or, or, or there's something else going on at work, any kind of struggle that you're facing, I just challenge you, talk to your spouse about it today. You will be so glad that you did. You want to bring them into your life. Don't be leaving, le leading these separate lives, but being in the same house. You're missing the entire point of marriage. And you're really, you're really keeping your spouse from really helping you. I truly believe that we can be each other's best helpers. Like I shared with you all, during that time of anxiety and depression, Dave was just such a, a strong person in my life and, and I knew I could always go to him. And when you have that, that person that you can lean on, you're able to heal so much faster. And so if, if you did hear something today that makes you feel like we need to have a conversation, I truly believe that's God prompting your heart. And I would say, have it sooner rather than later, don't wait. Do it tonight, do it whenever you guys have a break at this conference and have that conversation. And I also wanna challenge the person who's hearing maybe the hard truth, please listen. Don't interrupt them, let them get it all out. Don't yell, you may feel very hurt and you may have every right to be upset, but just hear them out and then tell them how you feel in, in a productive way and then talk about what you're going to do to get this healed, to, to help this problem and to, to work on it together. And you know, Dave, I think you may have already said this, but I'll just repeat it again. You know, the couples with the strongest marriages, with the happiest marriages, they aren't the ones that never had a reason to give up. They're the ones who just refused to give up through it. They refused and they kept on going and they kept on going and they chose for their story to be one of victory, to be one of coming through the hard times out the other side, one where God was at the center of it all, even in the midst of something that you thought, I don't know if we're gonna make it through this. When you come together and you lean on God together and you refuse to give up, He can do the miraculous and we see it every day. He's still in the business of raising dead things and bringing them back to life. And He does that not only with, with uh, people and with sickness, he does it with marriages. He does it with marriages. And so if your marriage is struggling, I don't think it's any accident that you're here. And it's just my hope and prayer that you will hear something and you will let it seep into your heart and you will know that God
God wants you to stick it out and, and that you have something amazing on the other side of this that you really can't even see right now, but it's something that only God can do and He wants to do it for you and your marriage today. If you're enjoying this teaching, we want to tell you how you can learn more while also partnering with us at Marriage Today to help strengthen couples all over the world. So here's how. For your gift of any amount, we want to send you the teaching you're watching right now as either a video download or a DVD. And for your gift of $35 or more, you'll receive this teaching plus our brand new book, The Naked Truth About Sex and Marriage. And we are so excited to share this book with you. Sweetie, why don't you tell them a little bit about it, why we wrote it, and what they can expect to gain as they read it. Yeah, no, we are so excited about this resource. It's one of those books where we talk about those burning questions that every couple has about sex and marriage. You know, we want to know what does God say about this? How is it supposed to be? We go there. We talk about things that maybe you were too embarrassed to ask in the past. We talk about those questions. Very openly. Very openly. And we, and we truly believe that, you know, God created sex and it is good. And he wants married people to have the best sex life ever. And so we talk about how to do that in practical ways. That's right. He wants you to have an amazing sex life. We could get an amen for that. Yes. That's a good one. So he wants you to have a great sex life. And this book will help you to build intimacy both inside and outside the bedroom because it's going to help you have conversations about these issues that maybe you've never really known how to talk about before. That's right. And so we want to get this resource in your hands. And so if you want more information about this, stay tuned. Discover how you can overcome the challenges of marriage and grow closer to your spouse as Dave and Ashley Willis share tools for building a stronger marriage. In these two live sessions from the EXO Marriage Conference, you will learn how to deepen intimacy, increase unity, and grow in love and friendship as you build a stronger marriage. When you come together and you lean on God together and you refuse to give up, He can do the miraculous and we see it every day. Support Marriage Today with your gift of any amount and we'll send you Building a Stronger Marriage on DVD or as a digital download. Receive the videos on DVD or digital download as well as Dave and Ashley's new book, The Naked Truth About Sex and Marriage for your gift of $35 or more. This groundbreaking book reveals insights into what makes a marriage work for a lifetime. Start building your stronger marriage today. Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that session from 2017's EXO Conference. And it was exciting watching that again and reliving some of those parts of our story and what Ashley, you shared uh, about going through anxiety, depression, um, what would you say to some couples that are watching this right now that might be in that exact same struggle that you were in, feeling that anxiety, feeling that depression, or whatever their struggle might be, and they're not sure what to do next? Well, I really think the key to going through any struggle is just making sure that we go through it together and not retreat to trying to figure it out by ourselves. And I think so many times, you know, we do that. We think, well, I'm just going to handle this on my own because it's my struggle. But the truth is, when we're married, it's not his struggle or her struggle. It's our struggle. And so I, I really don't think we would have been able to get through those things, you know, on our own. I know that when I was going through the depression and anxiety, I really needed you to pray with me and to be there for me and to encourage me, especially in those times when I was feeling so weak. And so I just want to really encourage, you know, the person who's going through anxiety and depression right now, just don't try to face this alone. Really confess this to your spouse. Tell your spouse that you're struggling with this. And I promise you that, that you can get through this and, and you're going to get through it a lot better when you lean on your spouse and, and just go through it together instead of by yourself. I also encourage you to focus on God's word and what he says about you and his truth. Because I think so many times when we're facing anxiety, we believe all these lies and we, and we live full of shame, but God wants us to surrender that to him. He wants us to have freedom and he wants us to know and believe his truth. And so I just think that, that when we get real about it and we, we realize what we're facing together and we talk about it with each other, we can get through just about anything together. Yeah, that's so true. And I want to give a challenge just to the guys watching right now, because maybe you were watching that and you could relate to, to my testimony about pornography and millions and millions of guys, millions of Christian men and a growing number of women are, are struggling with pornography every day. And I'm convinced it is the single biggest enemy of intimacy in marriage today that we cannot buy into this terrible lie that it's harmless or that it's just in entertainment. It is toxic and it's a sin. Jesus clearly taught that. The Bible teaches throughout the, harmful, the harmfulness of lust and objectifying other people, um, whether you're married or you're single. But 
man, our marriages are being destroyed by porn and we've got to get rid of it. And so if that's an issue for you, get help, get accountability, get software on your phone, your computer, do whatever it takes to get rid of it. But it all starts with honesty, with whatever your struggle is, whether your struggle is a secret sin like pornography or whether your struggle is something that you did nothing to bring on like anxiety, depression, or whatever it is, you've got to start by just bringing it all out into the open, getting, getting naked together, not just in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense, saying, I don't have anything to hide from you. I want you to know everything that I'm struggling with, all my hopes, all my fears, everything, so that we can face it together. Because when you face it together, you can conquer anything. So true. So if you want more information about how to have a stronger marriage and how to get real about these issues, make sure that you check out marriagetoday.com and also look up the videos on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you next time. We all enter into marriage confident a happy, fulfilling life is in front of us. Over time, life's journeys can quickly deflate those expectations and we're left feeling like we've fallen out of love. But with the right information and a mutual commitment to success, a better marriage is possible. Become a rock-solid partner and gain instant access to practical marriage help in topics ranging from communication, needs, and intimacy, as well as blended families, intentional dating, spiritual health, and much more. Marriage Today exists to help every person succeed in marriage. With your help, we can continue raising a standard for marriage and reverse the curse of family breakup in order to rebuild the nations one home at a time. That's why we're tied into the ministry. We want to be able to bless and give so they can keep doing what they're doing. There's just millions of marriages that need help. And if this is a way we can help facilitate that, then that's a great way to spend some money. We love Jimmy and Karen, and we love learning more about how uh, to be a better couple and how to help other couples like they do. Become a rock-solid partner with the ministry and mission of Marriage Today. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage building videos and updates.